The Night Beat starts right now. San Antonio fire crews continue to investigate an explosion that killed two people in Southeast Bear County. The explosion happened last night in the 9700 block of South Presa near I-37 and Loop 410. The night team's Camelia Juarez tells us why investigators are slow to get answers on the cause. She also spoke with neighbors miles away who still felt the large boom. This is what neighbors heard around 1130 last night. The sound shook the walls of people living in South Bear County. Rachel Reyes says it sounded like someone drove their car right into her house. Something hit the garage door like really hard and you can even like feel like a vibration like that. The explosion even alarmed pets. My cats all inside, they ran everywhere. My poor puppy, she was running around the house. The explosion happened near K-Bar, a construction company on South Presses street near highway 181. It was so far away and how we felt it all like all the neighbors came outside and one of them came out with a bat and her, it was crazy. San Antonio fire officials say when crews got to the scene they found one person dead. Oh my gosh that's sad. A second victim was confirmed deceased on Saturday afternoon as arson investigates the people of Mission Creek are waiting to see the outcome. Everybody's like, I heard the same thing. And you see all everybody's location and it was just scattered everywhere. It was all, all the south side. San Antonio Fire says a huge scene like this will take some time to figure out the cause. And as of now, the Bear County Medical Examiner's Office is still working to identify those two victims. Camelia Juarez, Quesa 12 News. We have an update on a fatal shooting we first told you about last night on the night beat. We now know a 21 year old suspect detained by police is facing charges. His name has not been released, but the suspect was booked for an outstanding robbery warrant and evading arrest. Now, it's not clear at this time if he will face murder charges. The shooting happened around 7 p.m. on Roland Avenue near Pecan Valley on the east side. Now, when police arrived, they found a man with a fatal gunshot wound to the chest. The Bear, Bear County Medical Medical examiner's office is still working to identify the victim. All right, let's take a look outside with live cam here this Saturday night for you can see it looks a little hazy out there, a little foggy. We actually have some rain that's pushing across portions of Bear County this hour and really as we head into the overnight hours tonight, we have some additional chances, especially in our central and eastern counties as a weak cold front pushes through south central Texas. So let's get you an update at the radar here. You can see we've got a little downpour there on the west side that is crossing over Highway 90 approaching the exit to 151 and then a bigger cluster of rain on the southeast side that is approaching the Highland Park area as well as I-10 that all moving off to the north. So for places like Kirby and then eventually upwards to Windcrest, we can expect that activity to push up your way. Again, we do have the potential to find some additional rounds of rain, some scattered showers, a couple of thunderstorms possible by midnight and into to the pre dawn hours of our Sunday as we see that front move in. It's not going to be for everybody, but we will keep eyes on that, especially for our central and eastern counties. Sunday is looking a little bit cooler than what we found out there today. We'll have a full look at what we can expect and a preview it next week coming up in just a few guys. Definitely appreciate those rain chances. Thanks for that, Mia. Now, her child was taken from her, but that didn't stop Kimberly Rubio from fighting for change in her honor and didn't stop her from finishing school. Magnum Culare with a 3.8 GPA. It's an achievement coming now six months since her daughter Lexi lost her life at Robb Elementary. Night team's Alyssa Cole spoke with the now St. Mary University's graduate as she walked across the stage and into a new chapter of her life. Kimberly Nicola Rubio is just moments away from receiving a Bachelor of Arts degree in history at St. Mary's University. She's filled with emotion. I'm proud of myself and I feel like Lexi would be proud of me. Thinking of her 10 year old daughter, Lexi Rubio, whose life was taken in the mass shooting at Robb Elementary. I think she would have asked to look around the campus because Lexi wanted to attend St. Mary's. Kimberly just a semester away from graduating when the tragedy happened back in May is using her strength and Lexi's memory as a source of power, not only to walk across the stage, but to advocate for an assault weapons ban. Magna cum laude, Kimberly Rubio, history. I don't think that the average citizen should have access to a weapon that ruins people's lives.
As she navigates a new chapter of life, she acknowledges the pain it comes with her husband by her side every step of the way. I am very proud of you, of course. I know Lexi's looking down on you and she's happy. She's here. And I love you. Love you too. She's determined to keep moving forward, honoring the memory of her daughter and all the 21 victims of Robb Elementary. Our plans originally were to wait for me to graduate and then to leave Uvalde. Um, I wasn't fast enough. Um, now that we buried our daughter there, we'll stay with her. So we're readjusting and trying to figure out what's next. A week after the tragedy in Uvalde, St. Mary's University created the Lexi Rubio Memorial Law Scholarship Fund. Kimberly says Lexi wanted to be a lawyer and it was the perfect way for the university to honor her memory. Alyssa Cole, KSAT 12 News. An Uber driver is in a hospital tonight after being shot while on the job. And San Antonio police say the customer he picked up may be to blame. Police say the customer called for an Uber. While waiting, the customer got into an argument with another person outside a local bar. The customer got into the Uber, but police say the suspect followed them and eventually shot at them. The Uber driver was shot three times and the customer once they were able to stop at a nearby hotel to get help. That's near uh, Ingram Road and Northwest Loop 410. Police are still looking for that suspect. The Bear County Medical Examiner's Office is still working to identify a woman whose body was found inside a burned vehicle. San Antonio police say they were called to a vehicle fire on I-10. Officers found the vehicle off the roadway and hidden in brush. Police determined the fire was not an accident. Firefighters were called out to put it out. Now arson and police are investigating. The FBI joining the investigation into a break in at a secured transmitter tower site near Elmendorf. Turns out it's one of several similar break ins across Texas and the US, but it's not clear if there's a link. Here's a look at the suspects wanted in the case near Elmendorf. Wilson County Sheriff's deputies want you to take a good look at these surveillance images. Three suspects are seen walking around the site early Sunday morning before breaking in and taking several items. If you recognize any of the suspects, Give the Wilson County Sheriff's Office a call at 830-393-2535. Four people at the Houston Forensic Science Center are now without a job. It's because of starting their own private DNA lab. Officials at the center say it's in direct violation of their employee contracts. The four people are accused of doing similar testing to what their employer was doing. So why does that matter? The Houston Forensic Science Center tests all the crime scene evidence for Harris County potentially impacting many criminal cases. It could mean that good people who aren't bad and didn't do anything wrong uh, could potentially get convicted. It could also mean that, that somebody uh, who committed a crime is going to get set free. I mean, it cuts both ways. We just don't know yet. Anyone with a pending criminal case in Harris County is urged to call their lawyer. By the end of this year, 300 kids will have a comfy place to lay their heads at night. But first, the prep work is underway. Today, volunteers with Sleep in Heavenly Peace build bed frames. They are putting together the beds for kids in need in our community. Now, some jobs as easy as gathering supplies, others involving power tools like saws and sanders. Each bed costs about $250 and includes the bed frame, the mattress, and the bedding. They have one more day of building scheduled for next Saturday, and delivery day is Christmas Eve. And don't forget, KSAT is helping raise money for the Parade of Kettles by the Salvation Army. It's a competition between other businesses, and of course, we want to be number one. No matter how big or how small, every donation helps. You can donate by scanning this QR code on your screen by, or by heading to ksat.com. The U.S. soccer community is mourning the loss of a sports journalist who died at the World Cup. By those who knew him say this was a big hit on the community. Plus, this week's Behind the Kitchen Door might look a little familiar. That's because we are following up with three places who had failing scores. See how they did after the inspection. Well, it doesn't feel like winter in Texas, but for other parts of the country, winter is coming early. The powerful winter storm on the forecast and the several states affected coming up. This essay salutes holiday greeting is brought to you by Gomez Law Firm. Christmas is a time to be thankful for our many blessings. So on behalf of the Joe Gomez Law Firm, we want to thank our armed forces and veterans for their service. Merry, Merry Christmas. Christmas.
Well, not here at home, but winter weather is impacting much of the country in the mountains of central and northern California. Some areas are seeing up to four inches of snowfall an hour. Tomorrow, parts of the Northeast and New England could see their first snowfall of the season. Here's ABC's Chuck Syverson, who shows us how this powerful winter storm is going to impact us here in Texas. Powerful winter storms are moving across the country. One system bringing heavy snow and strong winds to parts of the West. Snow totals in the Sierra Nevada mountains in California could be up to five feet. The wind's shutting down this ski lift at Heavenly Resort in South Lake Tahoe. And the storm whipping up the surf off the coast of Santa Cruz. Sacramento being hit with heavy rains. I mean, it's crazy. It ain't been like this in years. ABC's Zorin Shah is there. Those power lines right there backing down onto this car. There was a huge power line going across the top of my car. It's probably total. A different system is moving across the Midwest. More than nine inches of snow falling in Sioux Falls, South Dakota. Plow drivers working to stay ahead of the storm. These guys have been working, or a lot of the times have been working for uh, 12 12, sometimes 16-hour shifts. That same system expected to move into the Northeast on Sunday. Hard to believe that in the Northeast till December 10th, and we don't have any snow on the ground. That's about to change. It's cruising across the Great Lake, kind of moisture starved, but by tomorrow morning, it starts to tap that moisture, and snows will explode across the western New York and eventually into New England. And Tuesday could be a dangerous day in parts of the South. Eastern Texas, along with much of Louisiana, Arkansas, and Mississippi could be hit with strong winds, large hail, and possible tornadoes. Chuck Sievertson, ABC News. Oh, I don't want it to get that cold, but definitely just would like to, see, uh, just like to see the temperatures drop a little bit. I think the ticker said 71 yeah. just a few moments ago. I Especially to, considering that it's December, right? Yeah, yeah. we went to see How Santa today and they were wearing shorts. So. Oh, <laughs> shorts and sandals, right, on December 10th to see Santa. Well, the good news is, is that by the middle of next week, we're going to have a cold front move through that does look to pack a little bit bigger of a punch, especially when it comes to dropping our temperatures closer to the seasonal average. And really, tomorrow is going to be slightly cooler than what we've seen out there over the past several days thanks to a weak cold front that is going to move through south central Texas tonight. Along with that, it is going to spark a scattered rain and storm chance, not for everybody, but for some. And then yes, as we head into Tuesday of next week, that's when we are expecting for that second front to move through and that's going to help out our temperatures, make it feel just a little bit more festive across south central Texas. But until we can get there, it is huge humid tonight and because of all of that moisture in place we have been able to manage some downpours non-severe activity just some good soaking rain for portions of Bear County here this hour we've got a downpour really for the most part inside of Loop 410 on the east side Houston High School there's Rigsby Avenue Roland Road right there even just south of Highland Park another cluster of some heavy rain crossing over I-37 that activity is moving farther off to the north northeast so for places like Kirby Windcrest even stretching up to the Converse and Randolph Air Force Base area give it another 30 minutes or so and that activity will likely be moving into your neck of the woods and we've got another little shower here on the northwest side there approaching Lee High School crossing over I-10 just to the south of Loop 410 you can see that we do have a few additional showers one that's moving into southwestern Bear County and then just a few more splashes of rain there along the I-35 corridor in Frio County, stretching over into northern Atascosa County. So we'll keep eyes on that, but as we zoom this out and take a look at the big picture across the Lone Star State, you can see there's some heavier downpours and some thunderstorms along and east of I-45 out in deep southeast Texas, and some additional activity that is moving closer to I-35 across the central portions of the state. That is all thanks to this weak front that will continue pushing farther down to the southeast here through the overnight hours and as it does so it is expected to spark up another round of some scattered rain and thunderstorm activity. You can see by about 2:30, especially in our eastern counties near Gonzales stretching over to Floresville and Lavernia could see some rumbles of thunder there. We'll call it overall about a 50% chance. Again, better chances of finding that across the central and eastern reaches of our region. Maybe a few isolated light showers 
showers possible west of San Antonio, but overall rain chances there are a little bit lower. But by wake up time tomorrow morning, by the time the sun comes up, sure a few lingering showers possible, but most of that activity does look to be off to our south and our east. Now the good news is earlier this evening, the Storm Prediction Center actually trimmed back that low end one out of five risk for an isolated severe storm. We'll monitor to see if we can't find a few instances of gusty winds, but that is the exception rather than the rule. Temperature wise, we'll start off our Sunday in the upper 50s and low 60s. Like what we found over the past couple of days, some of that morning cloud cover breaks up just a little bit. Still, I think mostly cloudy skies in store for the most part, but tomorrow afternoon highs only around 70, so that's better than 80 what we've seen over the past several days. Still warm and muggy on Monday with some morning fog and drizzle, and then that front moves through on Tuesday, and those temperatures drop back closer to where they finally should be for this time <laughs> of year, guys. Can't complain too much. Great weather during the day, a little chillier at night. So. Definitely looking Good. forward to that cool front. All right, thanks, thanks for that, Mia. Mia. All right, now shifting gears over to sports. Larry, the Spurs had an 11 game lose streak. And yeah, now they're now they're coming back strong. Yeah, now they have a two game winning streak. And how about this? Today was Pop's 26th anniversary of being the Spurs head coach. I mean, to the day in his Spurs beat the heat as his gift, I guess you could say. And in men's college basketball, number one goes down coming up. After beating the Rockets Thursday night to snap their 11 game losing streak, the Spurs played at the Miami Heat today. First quarter, Keldon Johnson drives and splits two defenders for the layup tie in this game at 11. He had eight first quarter points. Closing seconds, Doug McDermott hits the jumper with one second to go in San Antonio Trail, 25 29 after one. Second quarter, Devin Vassell takes over. He steals the pass and makes a tough hoop over Victor Oladipo for two of his 10 second quarter points. Some five minutes ago, now Trey Jones feeds Charles Bassey for a high percentage alley oop, and it's 45 42 Spurs. Less than 45 seconds remaining, Jones gives San Antonio its largest lead of the half 57 52 via an acrobatic layup and one. Spurs led 59-57 at halftime. Third quarter, Heat guard Tyler Hero would make back-to-back-to-back -to -back -to -back three pointers in the first three minutes, outscoring the Spurs by himself 9-2, and Miami led 66-61. Spurs fight back, McBuckets for three, and SA's down one. Cue up Josh Richardson for a triple try with 36 seconds left, and San Antonio led 86-84 after three. Now the fourth quarter went back and forth. Romeo Langford drives baseline for a tough lefty shot. Spurs go up four. He scored a career high 19 points. A buck 13 to go, tied at 111, and Devin Vassell sinks a tough step back jumper, giving his team the lead for good. The Spurs hold on to win their second in a row, 115 to 111, and Johnson led the way with 21 points. The whole team did a good job. They're they're behind the curve, you know, coming out every night with all the injuries, and they haven't missed a beat. They've uh, competed uh, really well, and uh, we made some timely shots tonight, you know, down the stretch. So for us, it's a, it's a great win against a really well-coached, experienced team, so uh, we're thrilled. Spurs will come back home and get ready to host the Cleveland Cavaliers Monday night, 730 at the AT&T Center. Men's college basketball, number two, Texas hosting Arkansas Pine Bluff. First half, Marcus Carr breaks off a bounce pass to Dylan Mitchell, slam dunk, and it's 6-5 UT. Later on, Timmy Allen from the baseline goes bounce pass to Mitchell for another dunk, and it's 29-24 Texas, and they led 46-30 at halftime. Second half, Mitchell gets the ball and drives baseline for a sweet reverse slam dunk. No bounce pass needed. He led Texas starters with 13 points, and Texas wins by the final of 88-43, holding the goal and lines the 13 second half points, causing Pine Bluff head coach Solomon Boozman to praise the Horns defense. We're a defensive program. It's our identity. It's what we try to do because we want to win. Um, anybody that wins a defensive program, you know, like Baylor won the championship. They're a defensive program. Uh, Villanova wins the, pro the championship. They're a defensive program. Kansas last year, defensive program. So um, I think when somebody we respect, like we do, Solomon says something about us, we listen. Yeah, we, we appreciate him saying that. We do work hard. Number eight, Alabama. Number one, Houston. Late first half, Bama turns it over, and here come the Cougs. Jamal Sheed throws on a nasty one-handed slam for a one-point lead, and Houston led 31-27 at halftime. Second half, Jarris Walker picks off Bama's pass and lays it in, giving them a 15-point edge, 44-29. But Alabama comes back. Mark Sears with three with 3.05 to go. The Crimson Tide go up 63-62, and they hand Houston its first loss of the season, 71-65. 
UTSA women host in Idaho at the Convocation Center. Here's Queen Ulabo with the steal and layup. She scored 15 for UTSA. Jordan Jenkins, who led the Roadrunners with 22 points, goes three ball for a 17 point lead. Fourth quarter, Cindy Love from Steel High School gets the hoop and one. She scored 17. UTSA wins 76 69, improving the 2 0 at home and 2 5 overall this season. And coming up later in sports, and Cardinal Word football won a fast paced, high scoring game to advance in the FCS playoffs. This was an incredible contest. Yeah, high scoring game. It looked like a basketball score. <laughs> Almost. They were both right? in the 60s? Yeah. All right, thanks for that, Larry. <laughs> All right. Well, no hot water, food stored in cooler, th uh, cooler that's too warm, and eating while washing dishes. All these health violations found at different restaurants. We show you where this is in this week's Behind the Kitchen Door. Death at the World Cup. See the tributes pouring in for the famed soccer journalists who died from a fall. Health inspectors force a convenience store to temporarily shut down and two gyms restaurants are cited for being dirty and workers not using gloves. And get this, all three businesses have made repeat appearances on Behind the Kitchen Door. One establishment showing the night team's Tim Gerber, the corrections they've already made. Hi, I'm Tim with KSET 12 News. I do the Behind the Kitchen Door. I stopped by the 410 corner store in the 2300 block of Northeast Loop 410 to ask about a recent inspection that forced them to temporarily shut down. The same business featured on BKD just five months ago when they had an 80. A new inspection in October resulted in a 71. Eggs were being stored in a bucket at room temp. Tomatoes inside a fridge had mold on them. And there was even more mold inside the ice machine. Their biggest violation? No hot water. Heating element is not working on that day. Health inspectors immediately shut down the kitchen until repairs were made a few days later. They check everything is good. Then they say, okay, you can open the kitchen now. They now have their sights set on higher scores. Should be 95 or 95, 96. We can do it. This gym's in the 8200 block of Marbach was just featured on BKD in October when they got an 82. An inspection in November resulted in a 76. They had to throw out chorizo found under a grill temping at 100 degrees. All of the food in a cooler next to the grill was also tossed because it was too warm. The cooks weren't wearing gloves and no one washed their hands during the inspection. Employees also seen pushing around dirty food water on the floor due to a clogged drain. Daily inspections were ordered until all issues were resolved. This gym's at Culebra and Loop 1604 is back with an 80, a slight improvement from the 76 they had when we featured them back in June. They had numerous hand washing violations this time around, including a worker touching raw chicken, then returning to cook other foods without washing their hands or changing gloves. Another worker was eating while washing dishes. The whole place needed a serious cleaning. The inspector noting they need to intensify cleaning efforts, including removing mold from the walls and food buildup in soils on the floors, walls, and ceiling. That's what's happening behind the kitchen door. Tim Gerber, KSAT 12 News. Want to know who has good scores and who doesn't? We have a new tool for that. Just scan this QR code with your phone and it'll take you to a new mapping tool. It has the scores for local food businesses. The reports go back six months and are frequently updated. The United States is seeing a surge in flu cases after Thanksgiving. The CDC reports more than a third of all flu hospitalizations and deaths this season happened in just the past week. At least 13 million people have been sick with the flu, 120,000 hospitalized, and more than 7,000 deaths from the flu have been reported, according to the CDC. All but seven states are currently experiencing high or very high levels of respiratory virus activity. Meanwhile, city officials in New York City are urging people to use face masks indoors and in outdoors. Crowds are seeing a spike in COVID cases. And the city health department also recommends vaccine boosters that people get tested before getting together and to get treated quickly if they test positive. COVID cases in the city have been rising over the past seven days. Legendary American sports writer Grant Wall died suddenly yesterday while covering the World Cup in Qatar just days after celebrating his 49th birthday. ABC's Deidre Bolton tells us about the strange cough he had just before he died. 
Famed soccer journalist Grant Wall died suddenly Friday after he collapsed in his seat while covering the World Cup match between Argentina and the Netherlands. His wife, Dr. Celine Gounder, tweeting, I'm in complete shock. Wall had said throughout the week that he was feeling sick. On Thursday, during his podcast, Football with Grant Wall, he said he had bronchitis and he had been to the medical clinic twice, including that day. So many journalists have uh, got a crazy cough that sounds like a death rattle sometimes. He added that he had tested negative for COVID-19. I can't wait to be on the other side of what I have. His co-host on that podcast, Chris Whittingham, tweeting, Grant Wall was kind, needlessly kind adding, I'll miss him. I'm devastated beyond words. While in Qatar, Wall made some headlines of his own. His brother identifies as a member of the LGBTQ community. Wall tweeting this photo two weeks ago, saying security refused to let him into the stadium, telling him he had to change his shirt. Openly critical of FIFA, Wall wasn't afraid to report on how Qatar was running the World Cup. Now he's being remembered for his contributions to soccer. He was a great enthusiast for his work, for sports in general, for soccer in particular. But I think Grant really helped to establish it in the in the general sports public eye as, uh, oh, this is a serious sport. The State Department issuing a statement saying we are engaged with senior Qatari officials to see to it that his family's wishes are fulfilled as expeditiously as possible. Deirdre Bolton, ABC News, New York. A federal judge decided to not to hold former President Donald Trump and his legal team in contempt of court. The Justice Department asked the court to act after the former president failed to fully comply with a subpoena issued last May and demanded he return classified documents in his possession. In August, the FBI seized White House records from Trump's Mar-a-Lago estate, including about 100 classified documents. The government wants the Trump team to appoint a custodian of records who can certify the former president has returned all of the classified documents. Now, if your family has one of these on the Christmas list, you need to listen up. There's an increase in online puppy scams. What makes them so risky and how to avoid becoming a victim? A cute and cuddly puppy is on many kids' holiday lists, but officials are warning consumers to be alert about a new puppy scam that is on the rise. Yeah, ABC's Deidre Bolton tells us how to safely buy a pet online. As millions of Americans hunt for deals and the perfect last minute gift, a new warning about puppy scams. Good girl! Michigan's Attorney General and the Better Business Bureau are telling people to be on alert, saying pet scams are on track to account for about 18% of online shopping frauds this year, costing consumers more than $2 million. They add that Yorkies, Dachshunds, and French Bulldogs make up nearly 30% of puppy scams. Uh, the average monetary loss in each of these reports is $850, which is actually up 60% since 2017. Jeff and Katie Wells found a dog online and paid the seller around $750. We have a death great game, and I thought maybe it would be a good idea to get her a sister. But soon realized it was a scam. It was $750, um, and then right after then they started talking about the shipping and another $1,500. It was all in a one day. They are not alone. Scams like these flourish during the holiday season. The Better Business Bureau says buying a puppy online is among the riskiest purchases you can make because it says as many as 80 percent of sponsored pet ads are fake. Scammers are really smart, right? They follow the money. Uh, they would not be trying to wedge their way into the market if the market didn't exist. I was emotional because I was already had my heart set on that little little girl. She was sweet, you know. Yeah. But the Wells now with a happy ending, finding their new Great Danes, Ursula and air. They're part of the family and we just love them to death. That was Deidre Bolton reporting. And one sure way to avoid getting scammed out of a new family member is to consider adopting from a local shelter. All right, let's take another look outside with live camp here tonight. Still got the cloud cover on hand for some of us. It's been a little damp out there tonight as well as we continue to find a cluster of non-severe storms push across the eastern reaches of Bear County. It was another warm and humid day out there earlier this afternoon. The official high in San Antonio, 79 degrees, 13 degrees above the seasonal average. Tomorrow, I think, is a little bit cooler thanks to a 
a weak cold front that will find move into south central Texas here over the next 12 hours. You can see we still do have that cluster of storms on the southeastern reaches of Bear County through the overnight. Some additional scattered rain possible. Just a few lingering showers tomorrow before we dry things out. Some more fog and drizzle expected though into Monday morning and Tuesday morning as the humidity sticks with us. But then that front moves through Tuesday and allows for some cooler air to arrive. We'll have all those details coming up for you in just a few. All right, have you heard the rumbles? Did you hear it? Oh, you've been talking bit. about it. I didn't hear it. But I, I heard them. I also yeah. have bad hearing, but okay. <laughs> much needed uh, rain chances are finally coming through. Yes, absolutely. So we've got some storms already out there here in Bear County specifically. The good news is, is that they are non severe. So this is just good, healthy rain that we are picking up on here tonight. You can see where some of that heavier rain is really focused, generally in between I 37 and I 10 there on the southeastern side of the county. So what we can do is we can zoom in and kind of take a look at where some of the heavier rain is associated with this activity near Martinez there. Here's Loop 410, AT&T Center, Rigsby Avenue, as well as Rice Road. That's where the heaviest rain is tracking farther up to the northeast. So we'll keep eyes on that as it does move northeast. We've got a few more showers out there, one on the north side of Bear County and then a few more on the south side of the county. That does also stretch into northern Atascosa County. So we'll keep eyes on all of that here. I was looking at some of the trans guide cameras earlier. Again, not everybody has seen the rain, especially on the east side. We did have some damp spots out there, but no really big issues. So that is the good news. We will monitor those road conditions as well through the overnight because we are not finished with that rain chance. Again, we have a weak cold front that is currently situated just off to our north. As we head into the overnight hours, that is going to dip its toes into portions of south central Texas. Texas. This is 1 a.m. You can see some additional scattered activity possible, especially across the central and eastern reaches of the area. That's where the best rain chances are really going to be over the next 12 hours. It's possible we find a few isolated showers west of town and into the early morning hours of our Sunday there as well. But generally, by the time we are waking up, stepping out for any early Sunday morning plans, the bulk of the heavier rain should be well down to our south with just a few lingering light showers possible. Of course, we'll monitor that as well. So overall through the overnight hours, scattered rain and storms expected as we see that front move in better rain chances in the central and eastern reaches of our area. We will monitor for an isolated strong storm before the sun comes up tomorrow morning. That is currently a very low end threat here in San Antonio and surrounding areas. But if a storm does require some extra attention, we will need to monitor for some instances of gusty winds. If you do happen to get woken up through the overnight hours, thanks to a rumble of thunder or two, you can scan that QR code that will take you to a link where you can download the KSAT Weather Authority app to check the radar and of course get notifications sent to your phone. All right, until then, still a little mild and muggy out there. 72 degrees with a dew point of 66 officially here in town. 67 in Holota, 64 up in Comfort, 65 in Bandera, 71 on the south side of Bear County over at Stinson. Wake up time tomorrow. I think we're in the low 60s here in San Antonio. Again, a few isolated light lingering showers, not completely out of the question throughout the first half of the day. We'll see if we can't find some of that morning cloud cover break up just a bit into the afternoon. A few peaks of sunshine helping those temperatures rise into the upper 60s near 70. So that's the good news. We're wrapping up the weekend's plans about 10 degrees cooler than what we saw out there earlier this afternoon and over the past several days. Maybe a slight dip in the humidity tomorrow afternoon and evening, but it rushes back in by Monday morning and Tuesday morning, which means more areas of fog and pockets of drizzle will be possible. Those temperatures still well above average for the mornings in the 60s, but notice the second half of the work week looks a lot more like where we should be for this time of year. Our next cold front moves in on Tuesday that packs more of a punch when it comes to cooler and drier air that filters in and something we also haven't seen in a while the sunshine that looks to return more in full force Wednesday and into Thursday guys nothing like a Texas winter and fall right yeah exactly a <laughs> no. sweaty Texas winter <laughs> yeah thanks, that, Mia. thanks Mia
All right, Larry, the birds in San Antonio are flying high. We had UTSA <laughs> winning the conference championship last week. Now the uh, UIW Cardinals had a shootout. Yeah, they are in the FCS semifinals, and their quarterback, QB1, Lindsey Scott Jr., is putting up video game-like numbers. This young man is incredible. And UTSA football chasing another first coming up. I got one of the best wide receivers in the country. I got you know two of the best wide receivers in the country, one on one. Um, you know if uh, if that's how they want to want to go out, you know that's how we're gonna win the game. So um, you know all I, all I have to do is put it up and uh, give him a shot to catch the ball. And Carter Word quarterback Lindsey Scott Jr. is talking about his guy Taylor Grimes in Big Board Sports. UTSA held a party last night at the Arneson River Theater along the Riverwalk to celebrate two championship teams. Jeff Trailer and his Roadrunners were applauded for winning their second straight Conference USA football championship. And the women's soccer team got some championship love for winning the Conference USA title for the first time ever. Riding a 10-game winning streak, the football team will next face Troy in the Cure Bowl, where the Roadrunners will seek their first bowl victory. It gives us something to work for and motivate for, you know, because some teams get complacent. But when you got something like this to work ahead and still grind for us, it makes it, it makes it a whole lot easier to stay locked in. You know, it's just not another game, but it's another game to make history. History, man, we we be the first ones. It's something you won't forget, y'all won't forget, I won't forget, man. It's just it's just it'd be cool to be the first. Number 25 UTSA will play number 24 Troy in the Cure Bowl at 2 p.m. Friday, December the 16th in Orlando. In Sacramento, California last night at Carnival Word quarterback Lindsey Scott Jr. threw four touchdown passes, rushed for two scores to lead number seven UIW past number two Sacramento State 66-63 in the quarters of the FCS playoffs. It's now the highest scoring FCS postseason game in history. The Cardinals offense started off slowly going three and out on their first two drives and after that they got going. We came out those first two drives and we were kind of stagnant. And then after that, you know, they didn't blink, they didn't flinch, and they kept fighting. And um, I'm extremely, extremely proud of this group. You know, they battled to the very end, to literally to the last second. So we looked at the small, the small details in their technique um, and in their coverages. They do a great job of disguising and you know making sure we had our eyes in the right spot. So I mean, uh, we we watched hours on hours of film this week. Uh, Coach Leftwich and I, and uh, and Coach Kinney, and uh, you know, it paid off today. Scott set an FCS record with his 59th touchdown pass, breaking the old mark at 57. And Carter Word will play at number three, Dakota State, in the semis next weekend. Turning to the XFL, San Antonio Brahma's head coach Heinz Ward met with the media today at the Alamo Dome. Former and Carter Word standout Justin Alexander, defensive lineman, selected in the XFL draft by San Antonio, modeled the Brahma's uniforms for us. I love it. I love it, man. We got we've got the best uniforms in the XFL. It's, it's bar none. Uh, <laughs> um, you know, people say they're gonna look at us like this. It's kind of like Steelers, but you know, it's it's still gray and it's yellow. I just think that um, you know, here in the state of Texas and having a Brahma bull, uh, I, I think it's just fitting. The XFL will kick off on Saturday, February 18, 2023. In FIFA World Cup action, Morocco stunned Portugal 1-0 to become the first African nation, nation excuse me, to reach a World Cup semifinal. And France beat England 2-1 and will next face Morocco in the Final Four. Southern California quarterback Caleb Williams was named the Heisman Trophy winner tonight with 2,031 points. TCU QB Max Duggan finished second with 1,420 points and Robert Griffin the third former Heisman Trophy winner himself thinks Lindsey Scott Jr. from Incarnate Word should have been in that conversation and I agree. You said it yourself uh, video game numbers. Yep. That's Madden, NCAA college football. She's played exactly. all day. You would know a lot about it. Exactly, exactly. <laughs> I, would, I would win the Heisman every once in a while. <laughs> when you would create your player. There you Appreciate go. that player. <laughs> all right, we'll be right back. All right, still a heavy downpour on the east side of the county. We'll keep eyes on that and the scattered rain chance that moves in overnight tonight. Tomorrow, slightly cooler, more humidity on Monday. But then Tuesday, changes roll back in with our next cold front, guys. Definitely looking forward to the cold front. Thanks for that, Mia. Thank you guys for joining us. Have a great night.